A very warm welcome to our monthly NHSR webinar on the PRANA package and our package to calculate and visualize England's NHS primary care prescribing data. Uh, my name is Muhammad. I serve the NHSR community. I'm based at the strategy unit and today I'm absolutely delighted uh, to be joined by Kishore from the University of Bath who will be our presenter for the webinar. Uh, the webinar is scheduled for about an hour. Um, it will be recorded and will be made available later through our YouTube page. Uh, during the webinar, if you have any questions, please use the Teams live Q&A function and I as host will try and uh, direct the questions to uh, to our guest speaker. Um, and before I hand over to Kishore, um, I kind of just like to take this opportunity to say just to give a quick overview uh, of where we are with the community and different ways of, that people might get involved. Um, I was sharing my screen earlier and you can see this is uh, the landing page for our new website. I think most of you will be familiar with it because you've you've all registered through the website. Um, but just a few things that may not be uh, uh, kind of completely uh, um, uh, front of mind uh, uh, in terms of the website. Um, we've got a um, we've got a very active, thriving Slack community. So please do try and join there, particularly if you want to see the various conversations that are going on, various sub projects that are going on. And there's a nice, really very friendly help with our channel where you can ask questions about R and they usually get answered very, very quickly. Um, so do please try and join us there. You can also join us on Hexitime, which is a health and care professional network where you can network with people outside of data science um, in all sorts of different ways, really. Um, and um, we've got a, a series of podcasts we can, you can see on the screen. We've had one just uh, in July um, and you can see the list of our supporters. As you scroll down, uh, we give you a quick description of the aims of our community and the kind of things we want to do, uh, the kind of numbers that are involved in the community to, to date. Um, just another thing to note, we have a virtual NHSR Academy. Its purpose is to provide training and it also gives out titles. So uh, here are the titles that are available for people who are actively engaged in the community and doing things to promote the use of R and other open source solutions in, in, in health and care. Uh, so you can have a look at that page when you want. And also there's an application process, which is uh, fairly straightforward. Um, uh, and in terms of uh, blogs, uh, just to get, again give you a sense that we've got lots of people writing uh, blogs all the time. Uh, and we'd really encourage colleagues uh, on the call uh, to also consider uh, submitting a blog post um, uh, on it can be anything really as you, you, you'll see it's, it's a very kind of broad uh, a broad set of topics and it's not just for um, for people who are ex very experienced with R it's also for, 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 for newbies really and we will offer uh, as much help and support as people need so you can always send us uh, your rough idea and we can, we can kind of support you. Um, the events page is very important. This is where you log into various events and see what's going on. So the conference is the next big thing in November, but we do have a, a, a webinar in September. And so uh, and there's another one coming up also uh, in September for our studio. So we'll we'll put those up uh, as a new course. I should have just said that our website is still on beta release. So so if you do see any issues, please bear with us, but also communicate with us on how we can get things better. Uh, a page that I really want to work hard on, I haven't had much time, is to show some success stories. So if you've got personal success stories of using R, then this is the place I'd like to kind of showcase them. Um, and the resource page is still up a work in progress. So um, so that was just a quick overview uh, uh, and um, that uh, hopefully kind of gives you a quick sense of what's going on. Um, I'm now going to uh, hand over to Kishore to uh, to uh, introduce himself, uh, tell us a little bit about how he got to kind of his journey to where he is and his interest in in R and healthcare, uh, and then uh, to proceed with the presentation, please. So uh, uh, over to Kishore, please. Yeah, I can show you. Uh, thanks, Muhammad. Uh, thanks already for like having me here. I'll try to share my slides. Okay. 
think you're able to see the next slide. Yes, we can. Thank you. Again, th thanks, um, and Charlie, for uh, having me here and for your kind invitation. And uh, yeah, thanks everyone attending this uh, webinar. And yeah, I'm Kishore, and uh, I'm here to talk about uh, Prana. There's a package to calculate and visualize in the NHS primary care prescription data. Uh, I work as a post. I'm working as a postdoctoral research associate in uh, environmental chemistry and public health research group, led by Professor Barbara at the Department of Chemistry University of Bath. And uh, yeah, I have scheduled my talk as follows, like a short introduction about me and my research background and the, the prana and its workflow, and some of the case studies uh, which using prana for our present research and the summary with me. Like uh, I, I did my master's in analytic chemistry in my uh, in Chennai and from India, and I have joined as a uh, I, my research or career started as a project student in the National Physical Laboratory New Delhi in India. And where I researched on like uh, different uh, low cost biosensors uh, for uh, infectious diseases and cardiac and cancer biomarkers. And then I, I started my PhD in biomedical engineering in Sweden, in Lund University, and where I have worked with uh, different uh, soil phase extraction materials. So my work there is like to uh, analyze uh, newly prepared soil phase extraction materials for like our thing to develop on a high throughput model. Uh, because uh, we end up with like a lot of um, materials and uh, we need to check these materials and how well they bind to the our target materials. And uh, then uh, after that, like after my PhD, I joined as a like a research associate, like postdoctoral research associate in the University of Bath, UK. And uh, uh, presently I'm working on like uh, different projects, uh, but majorly it's involved like uh, based based epidemiology. So I'm trying to find uh, uh, like uh, pharmaceuticals and uh, the biomarkers in the wastewater. I'll talk about uh, my project like in the latest uh, next slide. But uh, yeah, uh, as you see, I, I can uh, I work in like different research expertise, but uh, um, majorly it, this kind of summit like uh, try to find new materials uh, to capture uh, the small molecules in different complex matrices. Uh, for example, like I started with the blood, and then now I'm working on like more complex material like wastewater. So these are like more turns towards analytic chemistry, and it's more analysis. So end up with like more uh, data. Uh, like huge large volume of data so and uh, I have during my research career like I trained in like different tools uh, to handle these data sets but uh, during my PhD I, at one point like I, I got in a state like uh, I need to develop something of my own for my process my, my work because uh, I don't see much of the applications are fit into my research so then I started initially with Python but uh, one of my friend introduced me to R world so then I immediately jumped to R, and uh, so from my PhD, like 2014, I, I working on R, and then during my PhD, I work, I developed a, like a, a, from my first R shiny application, like so. This is a Maldives, and uh, this application is kind of a, a getting this data from uh, um, mass spectrometry and visualizing these results, and uh, trying to find um, a pattern or like uh, trying to find which material uh, fit to uh, that able to target like capture our target material. So that's how I started with uh, our Shiny application. And uh, when I come, came to like uh, um, Bath, like so my, my my major task is also like to develop like some tools to capture uh, or like to model model chemi chemicals inside uh, wastewater. So that's how I try to work on a different tool. And then I started working on this prescription data tool. And uh, so I developed like new R package. So I'm going to talk more about in the next slides. As you said, like I'm working in the environmental chemistry and biological health research group led by Professor Barbara Caspi Gordon and chemistry department. Like so, the research group like have a different um, research themes like so analytical chemistry, data modeling, and environmental pollution and public health and water quality and wastewater based epidemiology. My project is mostly working on like wastewater based epidemiology. Uh, so these are the two projects uh, I'm working on. Uh, I worked and like personally working on like so this interest and um, some are really innovative. Uh, pathway control project. So this project, uh, the interest project, is kind of uh, trying to find find uh, um, pharmaceuticals usage uh, using wastewater-based epidemiology and uh, try to find and find the new public health biomarkers in this uh, and try to assess the public health using wastewater-based epidemiology. And the Summer Valley project is kind of a uh, further explore this uh, and also using green and social prescribing. To improve community health and river quality. Uh, the work package uh, apply like uh, based on a bit of epidemiology and uh, 
modeling to understand the uh, temporal variability of uh, pharmaceuticals, uh, especially non-communicable disease uh, pharmaceuticals, uh, usage in Summer Valley region, and to test the potential of uh, natural health interventions uh, to deliver positive outcomes for both human and environmental health. So this project is uh, funded by different uh, funding bodies, and like we have like collaborators uh, such as like Physics Water and EPSRC and uh, Bath Council, and then uh, we also have like Natural England in this project. So you can hear more about our group in this uh, website. So as you said, like so uh, the research background, as you said, like uh, finding active pharmaceutical ingredients. Uh, so there are like wide range of active pharmaceutical ingredients uh, APS have been identified and quantified in aquatic environment. In the last decade and uh, several reports uh, indicated that their adverse impacts uh, on exposed environmental species and uh, humans. Uh, for, for the environmental risk assessment of uh, these APIs, um, environmental concentrations and uh, predicted no effect concentrations uh, are the key decision parameters. But uh, for uh, getting this uh, environmental assessment of APIs, uh, some of them are like limited because. Uh, because we, we are talking about like uh, environmental matrices such as, such as like wastewater, effluent, and river. So these are like uh, complex data, complex materials, and uh, on these to trying to find a like good analytical method for finding these in this complex material is kind of uh, difficult. Like so, there is a limitation in because of this. So for, for this, uh, the alternative is kind of predicting these environmental concentrations in, in the, in, instead of like measuring these environmental concentrations. So that's why the prediction is kind of a uh, very important for. Uh, getting uh, to environmental risk assessment when, when we say about like prediction like uh, we need like different building blocks for these predictions uh, so the major building block for the prediction is uh, kind of getting how much it's consumed or like manufactured or like prescribed in the particular region of study and also like uh, uh, we also need to know about like this metabolism of these APs and because if, if, if you consume like how much it is excreted uh, from the human and then how much it's end up in the environment like so this information is needed and also uh, specific chemical data is also needed like such as like uh, absorption like how much it's absorbed uh, onto the surface or like it absorbed to this uh, water like so this kind of information is also needed and uh, finally like we need like a uh, large data sets of like a uh, wastewater treatment plant and like how much uh, because some of the uh, compounds can be removed in a wastewater treatment plant but some of them are like not uh, and then they can be left in the environment like so we need information on this uh, remote efficiency and also we need to have information about like the inhabitant and uh, number of people in say place catchments of study and also like flow of uh, wastewater and the river so these all informations are like needed or building blocks for these predictions so as you said like the major building block is the prescription data set because that's a basic and uh, the foundation of this uh, modeling uh, so when, when you say like a prescription like so uh, that's where like i try to find a, a prescription data set for our work and uh, then uh, I can't find like uh, direct or like uh, information for the prescription. Uh, uh, we have the prescription data set, but the prescription data set is kind of a large volume and we have this NHS uh, monthly prescription data set, but it is uh, cannot be identified uh, for local purpose. Like so, because we are talking about like uh, catchment, it's not like a region. So we need to find something like to uh, calculate for the catchment. And we found like some other uh, tools like uh, be able to calculate a number of items of prescription but uh, um, in for our research we need like a total quantity like so kilograms so that then that's why that how we able to calculate uh, the consumption so because of this uh, we, we developed this new package uh, prana and it, it's already published uh, the, on the package and this is still in like a, a developing uh, phase and uh, but like we have the solid uh, package it's, it's in the GitHub like so we can uh, download in the uh, GitHub and like install like so this is the uh, link for the um, GitHub page and uh, you can read more about the Prana which, um, this link and the paper and uh, so as I said like the Prana like uh, so this is kind of a, a present Prana uh, how like to be able to calculate for like 2015 to 2019 data set uh, because uh, 2019 there is a, a change in the uh, way of like uh, Description data set in NHS Digital. So, uh, my present code is not suitable for like uh, getting a description after 2019. Uh, I'll come to that later. Um, and uh, so, the Prana uh, have like four different uh, data sets like NHS description data set, like SNOMED code, and the NHS uh, dictionary of medicine and devices, and the postcode data set. Like, so all these data sets are like used for calculating the total quantity of uh, individual API in the present in, in the catchment. 
and these mapping of individual uh, total quantity can be mapped to postcode so that's the uh, advantage of uh, prana because it's in the postcode like so then we able to like correctly relate to the uh, catchment um, study so this is the prana workflow like so we need like a data preparation step and then uh, after the data in preparation, we need to input this data set to visualize uh, for our study and uh, be able to like, we need to like download uh, the results in like into CSV, PDF or like EPS format, like a high resolution format. So the Prana are able to do all these steps. So the first step like data preparation, like uh, so they said like we need like uh, NHS uh, practice log description data. So this is not the EPD data set like, but the uh, PDPA data set like so that to 2019 data set like so this is the data set we used for the presentation of prana and uh, we, we use like a bean of snowmap mapping and uh, for uh, this uh, package uh, particular one like large package we use like uh, a 2018 mapping data not uh, the recent uh, mapping data and uh, we also use like a dictionary of uh, medicines and devices uh, data set like the monthly release data set so these are all data sets like needed and uh, the prana has like different functions and uh, with these functions we able to generate data sets in uh, particular gp wise so you can see like a whole monthly data set and be able to get a data set in individual gps uh, and it, it depends on like a number of prescription data like if, if you input like uh, all like one year study like uh, then uh, one year data set like then the results will be like individual gps for in for like a one year data set be able to generate so, uh, so these are the functions uh, used to for like generating this. So the import DMT, uh, this, this will take uh, the DMT data and the, then uh, the mapping data, uh, which are like in a, like APM data is like an incorporated into panel package, but the DMT data, like you need to uh, do it manually. And uh, once you, you imported the DMT data and uh, then you use like a practice space. So this generate a data set like individual practices. So for example, like if this is the, uh, from these are the columns which are required from the NHS prescription data. So we need to like be enough code, be enough name, quantity, and practice, and period. And these are the columns are taken from the original prescription data from the NHS. And using our uh, functions in the package, so it's converted into uh, in this format. Like so the individual, uh, these CSV files have uh, these columns. So, and you can see like uh, now uh, from the VNF code, it generated, it, it discriminated, like, yeah, it, it converted them into like individual APIs. Even if, if the VNF have like, if, if the description have like two compounds, like here, X core max log, it, it, it decoded them into like two compound, two APIs, and the individual strengths and the strength unit, and even like medicinal form, like the capsule or tablet, because for our research purpose, like we need uh, like a capsule and tablet, and or like if it is like uh, uh, eye drops or like those kind of information we needed like so the prana package like help to um, decode them in like a combination form and also like individual gp name and their postcode and then the geolocations so this is how the each individual uh, file will have all these informations and once we have this information like so uh, this is uh, from the prana and we it will end up with like dot cc files and once we have all these files, we, we then you know, visualize this using Pranavis. So Pranavis is uh, is a shiny app, like it's it's incorporated inside uh, Prana. So if you, if you come and like run shiny Pranavis, uh, this will automatically open up in, in your uh, R Studio, like 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 a web browser, like so in your own computer, like so you don't need to install anything, like so it's it's directly incorporated into the Prana package. So once we have that and you can upload all the CSV files and be able to visualize the results. So I'll come to the results later. And so uh, you, you can see all the results of these compounds uh, using Pranavis and you can do like more um, analysis uh, in the Pranavis uh, thing. And uh, uh, like if, if it is like, a, because if, if you're taking about like a small volume of uh, the data set and if you, if you have like a good supercomputer like, having good processing speed like then it is uh, better like to use offline version but uh, uh, to make it like more um, easier like uh, uh, this can also be possible with Pranavis uh, like uh, uh, for example like we can use an external server like uh, for example like here uh, uh, the Pranavis in demo app, like I used uh, a Azure uh, account like so we have everything in an Azure virtual, in virtual machine where we have MySQL database and our studio server 
So all these uh, raw data sets are like uploaded to the MySQL database and uh, the Pranavis is running from the Australia server and uh, you can um, do all the uh, visualization uh, in a web server. So this can also be done. Uh, and, uh, and this is how the, uh, the present uh, Pranavis demo app is uh, running. Okay, Sean, we have a question. Um, as, uh, one of our colleagues has asked, um, is, is Prana on CRAN yet or is it on is it on GitHub and so that's the best place to to get it from? Yeah, it's still in a GitHub, like so. It's not in a, uh, it's not in Chrome. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, I'll address it later. Thanks. So these these are the, um, the some of the visualization uh, I took from the Pranavis. So for example, like you can you can see like this is NHS uh, bot and not Somerset uh, CCG. Like so in this region for 2018. And you can see the prescription of uh, different chemical, different APAs in kilograms. And uh, so this can be visualized and also be able to visualize the, for individual. Uh, uh, so this is the individual amoxin trihydrate. Like so this is prescribed uh, over the year in different months. So this can, and you can see like this is uh, amoxin. Like so it's prescribed high in the winters, not in the summer. So we can see the trend. And uh, this is also like uh, uh, be able to see the trend over the different GPs. So these are the different GP surgeries inside the bonds, and you can see like the trend uh, of them in the 2018. And uh, so this is also like another visualization, like so we able to find the hard spot, like or like uh, which GPs is described more. So and uh, you can see the color code if it is like more than 0.4. Uh, I, I just for uh, for visualization, I put it like a uh, red and green and. Uh, Red, green, and yellow. Like so, you can see like kilogram is less than 0.4 and more than 0.4. It's it's red, and if it is like less than 0.1, I put green. And uh, you can see uh, if this is the different GPs inside the bonds, and uh, so this is a prescription of ibuprofen. And uh, you can visualize this uh, using a pranavis. Uh, I will give like a demo of uh, pranavis uh, in the web server. Yeah, so this is the uh, demo uh, application like uh, run, running in the, the domain and uh, this can be accessed. Uh, so if you go to like this pranavis.ac.uk and you can click on the demo app, uh, demo app and this will open up the demo app. And uh, this is uh, only for uh, 2018 data set is loaded here and it's only loaded for uh, bonds area like bonds CCG. And 2018, so and you can see like uh, I have uploaded already the sample targets. Like so, uh, this sample target is like the sample APIs, and I already uploaded this uh, in the example app. Like so, you can visualize them directly. But uh, if if you want to uh, like change the target, like you can also uh, upload the targets and you can visualize. And uh, so you can see these are targeted. Like so, since the up target in the compounds, which is called like targeted. And you can select the prescription year. As I said, like present it's only 2018. And you can select the region and the different region. And you can select like if it is like GP patties or like if you want to see like only out of our patties. And so this can also be uh, visualized here. And if you click uh, here, like if you want to like more information on this, so if you click on a max line, and you can see like how it differs on the different period over the month, over the year, and different months. And if you want to see like the stuff also like so, so you can see uh, there is a variation and you can go for like different practices. These are like GP practices and you see how this is described over the different GP uh, practices. And even you can go for like post score like level. And uh, because in some of the GP practices are like uh, located uh, in same post score, like so then the post codes are change. And uh, you can also visualize the medicine form, as you said, like so you can see like a, a tablet version or like a oral suspension or like a tablet. So these uh, all can be visualized and you can download as a CSV file, as you said, like in a PDF file or like a EPS file. And each and uh, individual, these can also be downloaded as a CSV or download as a PDF or EPS. So this is uh, developed in a BS4. Uh, 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 Package and uh, plotly uh, and the GG plots are like used, and you can read more about this in the in the manuscript I, I shared. And this is also like non non target 
uh, approach like so you can select the components and by drop down like if, if you can go for like all the different components like the APIs and you can click on them and you can same like select region and then select year and then select month and if you click gender cap it will open and and if you click on that like so you can see uh, as you like the G, it's on the different postcodes and you can see like how much um, individual postcodes have uh, over the months and uh, you're also able to like see the spatial uh, location here and select here you can see the metformin hydrochloride like it's, it's highly uh, prescribed in, for for the in diabetic so you can see uh, the kilograms and the informations and uh, similarly we can download uh, the csv files or like uh, uh, eps files and you can download as a month wise or like year wise so this can be done the pronouns. Sure, just while you're switching back to your slides, um, can I just ask um, uh, how long it took you to develop? Yeah, that, this uh, one, that... uh, yeah, I started like in 2018, late in 2018, and like finished in like 2019. Or, yeah. So, one so year. About, about a year. And are you? Is it mostly you working on this alone, or are you working in a team for the uh, software side, the data science side? Yeah, it's only me. Like, so uh, I had uh, support from uh, research tech, uh, software engineer in the university, but like uh, for the server side because I'm not uh, aware of this cloud computing at the time. So I got like uh, support from a research um, software engineer for the cloud setup, but for R, uh, it's only me. So, okay. Okay. And um, just while you again switch back to your uh, slides and things, but um, th th one of the questions that has been asked is um, the extent to which you can uh, screen out low values. I'm presuming low, low data points in terms of kilograms, which are small values, um, so that they uh, you can kind of um, visualize by filtering on a, a particular minimum value. Uh, is that is that a functionality which uh, uh, available in your current uh, shiny app no like uh, that means like so as of now we able to like visualize everything like uh, but we don't have this filter option like of uh, the kilogram like do you mean like to filter like only the smaller compounds yeah or or, the, or or filter on the on the higher values or something yeah, yeah but filtering by by quantity i think was what was implied by the by the question okay no, like no still not added, like yeah it's not added um and um in terms of people who have, uh, sorry, do, do car carry on with your presentation, by the way, but but I just wanted to just in terms of um, people you've demoed it to so far, obviously you're demo sharing it with the, with the community, NHSR community today. Who else have you had a chance to, your, your research team, obviously, but who? what other stakeholders have been interested in the, uh, uh, in the development of yeah, the like package? Yeah, so like, uh... Yeah, like mostly like uh, the, the bonds, like so they're interested in like uh, how much the consumption and uh, so this information like it's needed for them. And uh, as you said, like uh, this tool is kind of a, a extension for a risk assessment. Like so I'm working on like another uh, package uh, that's uh, next step for this. So that's a risk assessment. So EA is interested in that. Like so we, we had uh, like some discussion on that and uh, yeah, uh, so we, but they're like in still like a discussion in progress because uh, they're more interested in like risk assessment tool. Okay, okay, that's great. Uh, do you have other slides you want to go through, by the way? Yeah, please do. But there are other interesting questions I want to pick up later with you. Thank you. Like, um, so you can see the slide. Yes, we can. Okay. Yeah, like uh, so the uh, real applications of this uh, prescription data set, like so uh, as, as we are interested, like more on like uh, finding this consumption or like uh, of the chemicals in the in the uh, environment, like uh, using based water based technology. So, uh, so the one of the applications, like one of the work we have published is like, uh, so we try to find how the prescription like so this is red and then this is uh, black it's kind of a daily intake like we calculate based on the mass spectrometry results of this coding or like methadone and morphine and tramadol in the um, in the wastewater samples like so this is collected in like uh, four five different years and uh, it's sampled over like a four like one week 
uh, in, in in each individual years and uh, we analyze like in our group like we, we analyze this uh, using mass spectrometry and we compare it to the prescription data set and you can see like in some of them like coding and the methadone like they, they are like kind of aligned closely and uh, uh, in some cases it's not there but uh, it, but give like a, just give it like some trends on this like so how other prescription can be used as a, like a proxy uh, for like some of the compounds at least because uh, at least for a, a only prescription only medications like so be able to find this so if, for example like be able to back it, if, if this much is prescribed over the year like then we can understand like this much can be uh, end up in like in wastewater so these are like influence study it's not like uh, 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 environmental, uh, not a river, like it, these are like a wastewater influent uh, resource. And uh, the second one is like another, this is kind of a longitudinal study, like so we have like 13 months study of uh, NCD compounds, uh, like uh, uh, and uh, pain based pain compounds, and uh, um, these are like uh, uh, NSAIDs. Uh, NSAIDs uh, so, and you can see like uh, the salt, uh, these are like two different catchments, and uh, uh, I have like uh, four different compounds. So one is uh, ibuprofen, and uh, this is the uh, parent compound like ibuprofen, and these are the metabolites. So you know the metabolite metabolism is like kind of a, uh, how the pharmaceutical uh, transformed inside our body, and then uh, they excrete it. So this will give us the uh, information like, uh, okay, this is consumed by uh, here by human and then it, it the metabolite is excreted in the influent like so we can find them in the influent like both parent and the metabolite and the orange is kind of the prescription uh, data set so these are like population normalized daily load so you can see like uh, uh, the ranges are like kind of a close aligned uh, for some of the compounds but some of the compounds the prescription seems like high uh, and uh, you can see like these these compounds are like uh, dipron of like is kind of a closely aligned even in different studies like this is one site and this is another site and you can see they are compared very well very well and uh, yeah so these are the two case studies i want to highlight and uh, yeah uh, as you like that the, there is also like limitations in the tool like so as you said like this is uh, based on like monthly time resolution so these are like not actual day day samples day day uh, per prescription so this is monthly prescription and we don't have a day per like prescription per day because uh, all these measurements are like per day uh, be able to calculate like daily load and uh, these are like uh, uh, normalized from monthly to load so monthly data so this is kind of one limitation and uh, the tool like uh, our package able to only limit up to 2015 to 2019 because uh, then there is a change in the nss uh, data set format and uh, i'm presently working on this and uh, uh, this the, there is a new package like uh, i already developed it, but like no, not able to uh, put it in a, like in a uh, update this with product as a uh, update in the GitHub and also like we've been working on like to putting it in CRAN like hopefully by a November or like December this year like uh, this will be available in CRAN with uh, new uh, new uh, new functions to uh, calculate like uh, 2020 and like 20 like data sets after 2022 at least for 2022 uh, and in some cases like we are connecting to the prescription data set like to the uh, people in the catchments but sometimes it's not true like because uh, people uh, can be registered in the particular GPs but they can live in uh, other areas uh, uh, for example like uh, if it is like in, a, in, in our cases also like there is a car you know like a GP inside the university but most of them like registered in there but sometimes they, they live outside this zone zone like so this is not so there are kind of uncertainty in these calculations and also uh, uh, the prescription medications, like we also found evidence, like uh, the prescription is inside, uh, it's prescribed in some area, but it can be dispersed in a, like a completely different city. So we even like have evidence, like so some of the compounds are like, some of the APS are like prescribed, like some of the prescription are like prescribed in the, ca in the catchment like bath, but they are like dispensed uh, outside the pharmacy, like uh, outside the city, like uh, in London or somewhere uh, other than, uh, and then the bath. So this this all like limitations we need to be on we need to be aware when calculating this to uh, actual consumption but catchment or like a per CCG and uh, yeah like so the summary is kind of uh, yeah the prana and the prana is like so uh, be able to calculate on 2014 to 2019 and uh, this helps in assessment of uh, consumption trends over time and season and geographic locations. I also like to acknowledge uh, Professor uh, Barbara Caspi Gordon and the uh, Environmental Chemistry and Public Health Research Group and uh, Ruth Gordon and Richard Chandrick from Essex Water 
And uh, James Grant, like he's a uh, software research software engineer, uh, previously employed in the University of Bath, but he's not uh, in the University of Bath now. Like, uh, so he helped with, uh, for the setting up of the cloud uh, environment. And uh, so, like, to thank Sue Griffin, she worked uh, working with like NHS Bath, um, not some is some of CG, and she helped me like in the uh, understanding of. Uh, 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 these uh, different terms, uh, and also like to thank NHBC and NHS Digital and the uh, YNS Data Portal for the data support, uh, and uh, also like to thank our uh, development co team on Shiny and the uh, others of uh, different packages like I used. Uh, I have all the list of the packages in the manuscript, but I'm not able to generate in the uh, in the presentations. I'd also like to thank uh, uh, EPSRC for the funding and the six quarter for the funding, and the, these are funded by EPSRC. And uh, you can, uh, as I previously pointed out, you can uh, learn more about the Pranavis on this uh, link. And they have like hands on tutorial and everything on the, uh, this link. And also, like, uh, thanks uh, once again, like Mohammed and Saturday for the invitation and also kind uh, invitation for the NHSR community for giving me this opportunity. Thanks all for listening. Uh Sure, that's great. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, some people have asked about the links and I've posted uh, those links through. I'll also just add this link that you've just put on this slide just as a kind of uh, uh, just to aid things. Um, so one of the things that um, I was interested in is um, it took you about a year to do this work. You're 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 a kind of a, a chemist by, by background and training, uh, you've picked up data science in an amazing way. Um, what tell us some of the kind of the things that were really challenging in this piece of work for you? Yeah, like uh, yeah, I can start from uh, yeah. I'm not like as I said, like I'm I'm from chemistry and I'm not like well versed with uh, like a pharmaceutical compounds and uh, especially the coding and like with the. Uh, the codes like BNF codes. So uh, I'm also like new to uh, UK, like when, when I started this work. So yeah, like so initial work, uh, initial uh, issues were like with understanding these codes and like how how these codes are linked to the uh, uh, linked to the um, NHS prescription data set. Like because uh, yeah, that's what my initial uh, yeah I spend more time on like understanding the codes. Uh, so yeah, when initial like uh, hard coding, like uh, I'm not. Honestly, I not spend much time on for visualizing these, but like uh, to understand uh, these different uh, codes in BNF and the SNOMED and the DMD, so these kind of things. Uh, yeah, I, it, that took more time for me. Right. Okay. And um, we've had one question uh, about whether we can. Uh, there are any instructions to get the app running on Windows? Yeah, like the product. Yeah, like uh, so. Uh, it's, all in the link uh, in in this um, tutorial, like uh, you can see, or else I can show you the. Link. Yeah, yes, please just talk us through. That would be helpful. So if, if you want to work on the uh, like local version, like so, um, be able to do. Um, so this is the handbook here in this uh, price, and uh, then. So th these are the uh, so visualize and analyze it. Like so, you can uh, use this command like so for running and. Uh, yeah, like uh, for for local, like uh, you need to uh, link this. Uh, as you said, like the database service, we need to run, and I have added like some of the information, like how I added them to the MySQL, like and uh, in the section like four point two. Sorry, the images are like not sure. I think this is missing in this, like the images are like not loading, so I need to check again. But like uh, um, for the, the cloud version, like so the demo version is kind of running here, like and it's kind of working. And 
think I need to add this information like how are we able to like upload to the MySQL database service and then how we able to link. Uh, yeah, I thought I had a like, but no, the, the image is not opening up here. Kishore, the other, just one of the other questions is uh, when you um, link, when you kind of get the data from NHS Digital, are you already limiting the data to your part of the, the UK, so Somerset and, and Bath and so on, or are you actually uploading the whole, getting the whole data, but then in your Shiny app, you're restricting it to uh, the geography of interest. Yeah, like uh, so. Um, the, when we when we generate this uh, CSV files, like so, uh, we generate all the CSV files. So, uh, yeah, we, we can do both. Like so, if, if we when we're doing like a prana, like uh, I can show the workflow. So, if, so this is the uh, the practice wise, like so. So here, uh, this is the practice wise. So okay. this is the function. Like so, yeah. you can uh, yeah. type like so. Here we can type the GP practices. So yeah. if if you, if you could give the commands like only uh, particular GP practices, then it will generate only uh, individual CSV file of those GP practices. But if, if you give like a whole uh, practices, then you can uh, add all this. But like if, if it like data, like uh, so if. You can download whole data set and then you can convert them into like a single file. Like I have written like here. So CSV that like uh, here uh, you, you download all the files in a, like an own folder. If you, for example, like if you want like all that 12 uh, months file in a single folder and then you can give like CSV to that and then this uh, folder name, it automatically take all the uh, files into this and from that, uh, if you want like only particular GP practices, like so you can generate only those GP practices. So in this way, you're able to like calculate, uh, yeah, like uh, filter out like the GPs or like uh, the region of interest. Okay, that's great. And um, uh, uh, Kishore, uh, uh, you've done a huge amount of work and you've put together, uh, uh, and you've brought together various dis disciplines really. Uh, it's the first time I've heard of water uh, wastewater epidemiology. So, so thank you for for kind of uh, educating me on that. I wanted to just ask: um, now that you've you've done all this uh, amazing work and you've made this tool available, um, if there was if there were some areas where you would value other people to contribute and help, uh, what would that be? Yeah, like uh, so, as you said, like the, the NHS, um Still like this, this uh, data set like kind of uh, keep on changing like uh, so the energy digital data set like so uh, even like now the EPD data set is there and uh, and uh, the dictionary of uh, DMD dictionary it's it's still need to be uh, yeah from my understanding I think like it's still need to be like improved like improved much so I think that those are the areas can be used from others and uh, yeah and uh, one more thing i'm personally working is like you know, instead of this version like uh, i'm downloading all the files so uh, i need to have like a download uh, the file and then i need to upload uh, i i need to like uh, generate these individual csv files all in a computer but uh, what i'm developing is like end up getting directly the api and from the nhs and like uh, filtering the gp practice in this on the same uh, on online so that can also be uh, one thing like uh, which can be uh, developed in this particular area. OK, thank you. Uh, I, I, I think uh, from a personal point of view, uh, um, I'm not aware of uh, such a tool being made available uh, before. So, so uh, you know, a big thank you really uh, for, for, for kind of uh, uh, for that contribution really. And um, but I suspect there will be a number of stakeholders who will be interested in it from various perspectives. Um, I think particularly uh, people interested in in uh, analysing prescribing patterns uh, in uh, 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 in the NHS uh, in primary care settings, and also um, uh, those who commission uh, uh, who, who kind of are the budget holders for for prescribing budgets. Um, I think this kind of an a, a attempt to understand and describe the variation. Um, may be very, very uh, interesting and useful to them. Um, the only other initiative perhaps I'd like to suggest that 
uh, might you might kind of potentially connect with. Uh, we might even have colleagues from the Open Safely uh, project, which is um, they're from the University of Oxford uh, by uh, Ben Goldlake and his team. Uh, and um, I think they are also trying to uh, find ways of making uh, um, uh, large scale data sets uh, available for uh, analysis and insight to improve the, the quality and, uh, and delivery of healthcare. Um, so um, on, on that note, I'd, I'd like to thank you very much really for your work and uh, hopefully when you've had a chance to present it at additional conferences and other stakeholders, um, I think we'd love to hear about the kind of feedback and insight you're, you're getting from them. So uh, stay in touch with us, please, now that we've found you in the NHSL community. Uh, don't, don't, don't leave us. <laughs> Yeah, thank you very much, and thank you very much for the nice words. And yeah, like, uh, yeah, my, my present project is kind of ending like this year, like, so I don't know how, what the future holds for me, but yeah, it, yeah, my, my next plan is kind of what take like to uh, take this uh, prescription data set and like link into the like prediction, predicting the conservation environment. So, yeah, I'm planning like to stay here in this field for like some more time, uh, some more years, but yeah, you yeah, never, never know like what the future holds for me. But yeah, thank you very much. Um, for the opportunity and yeah thank you very much for finding me great thank you very much okay so uh, i will um uh so it's just kind of a big thank you to our presenter kishore and kind of sharing that work with us and thank you to everybody who's who's joined the call today um for your questions and engagement i think it's always interesting to see what people end up doing as a result of what they've heard so if people do take on this um uh, the tools that uh, uh, Kishore has developed and they use it or they adapt it uh, or they think of a use case and they want to kind of work further on it. Uh, kind of please let us know, perhaps either just on the Slack group or uh, or even write a blog post really. Um, and so thank you to our presenter. Thank you to Charlotte for uh, uh, kind of organizing things. Uh, and thank you to everybody who's joined today. We look forward to your uh, you joining us next time round. Uh, we've got uh, a couple of webinars in September. Uh, one of them is already on the website for registration. The other one will open quite soon. Um, and so we look forward uh, to, uh, to welcoming you on those as well. If any one of you, by the way, wants to um, present a webinar, we're always on the lookout for colleagues who want to share their work. Um, please do let us know. And again, we'll offer all the support and help that's required to kind of uh, uh, help with that process. Uh, so in the meantime, just a big thank you and I wish you all a, a pleasant afternoon. And that concludes the, the webinar for today. Thank you very much. Bye bye.